Hi, everyone. I believe we're live. Um, probably no one's joined us yet, but if you join us and there's any audio problems, just let me know. For those of you who are watching and want to make comments so that we can see who you are, you just have to allow StreamYard permissions so that we can see who you are. Um, okay, so without further ado, I would love to introduce my guest today, who is probably one of the people that I have known longest in the whole world. So at least that I can remember that I still keep in touch with. So Angie and I have actually known each other since we were what, five? Five, yeah. Yeah, yeah, five years old. We went to the same school together up until we were in eighth grade, but um, we also stayed in touch past that. And um, Angie is also a singer, classically trained singer and a voice teacher. And she is here as a representative from PN Medical. Um, Angie, I'll, I'll turn the floor over to you a little bit so that you can give a little introduction as well. Sure. I'm so happy to be doing this with you. This is great. Um, so yeah, like you said, I, I studied voice also. Um, we each kind of followed similar paths in that we studied classical voice. And then we're both really fascinated with the science behind singing. So there's some overlap there as well. And um, for me, I've been teaching for about 15 years, I think by about the same length of time you have. Mm -hmm. And um, throughout that time, I've really, it's been important to implement training around understanding people's bodies and mm -hmm. around the breathing mechanism. And that's a place where I wasn't trained with a lot of information. Um, you know, as musicians, as vocalists and as artists, we use a lot of imagery, um, a lot of sort of abstract thinking because our instrument is tucked away inside. We don't have any valves to press or a bow or strings to adjust. So a lot of times we're using this kind of like magical imagery and we talk about, you know, bringing your voice out here. And what does that actually mean to like bring my voice out here? You know, what's, what's physiologically taking place? And so um, the more I learned about the actual physiology of the breath, the more successful I was as a singer and I have been, and the more successful I am as a teacher and my students um, are therefore more successful as well. So um, I started working for PN Medical and it's a company that devised this device. So PN stands for Peggy Nicholson. She's the inventor of the breather. So this is the breather voice and the original breather is blue and we also have a pink one. So blue and pink were developed by Peggy about 40 years ago and they are used in the clinical field. So she is now a retired respiratory therapist and she used the breather to help patients who have chronic pulmonary issues like COPD or cystic fibrosis. Um, anywhere where they needed to strengthen and coordinate their breathing muscles to improve their quality of life. So now, after all this time, we've also seen that the breather can be used to help patients in all kinds of other situations like post spinal surgery or after having a stroke and working on the recovery from that. Um, all different kinds of issues where those core muscles are key to better living and better health. What we found also is that there's a group of people that are already healthy, that don't necessarily need medical intervention, but because of their line of work could really benefit from using the breather. And so specifically what we've been looking at is athletes um, who whether, and also in military as well. And then vocalists, wind and brass performers, public mm -hmm. speakers, basically people who rely on their voice for their job. Mm -hmm. And so that's when the breather voice was developed as well as the breather fit. And so the mechanism for breather voice and fit 
is such that it provides a higher resistance. Mm -hmm. So do you have any questions? Should I pause or do you want me to keep going? No, let's, let's keep going with this so that we get an accurate picture of what the breather actually is and what it does. Absolutely. Okay. So the purpose of the breather is to provide resistance on both inhalation and exhalation. So it's the equivalent of lifting weights, but instead of it being your biceps, it's your intercostal muscles, your abdominal muscles, your accessory breathing muscles. So it requires effort in inhalation and exhalation to really strengthen those muscles. And then over time, they become more coordinated as well. They work more effectively. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're, as singers, we're very in tune with our breath. Everything has to be about having that strong breath support. Well, what does that mean? I don't know about you, but I have had countless students come to me and I'll ask them, the first thing I'll say is, tell me what you know about breath. Tell me how to describe to me what happens. And they'll say, well, I sing from the diaphragm. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what the diaphragm is? Mm, no, I think it's an organ. No. <laughs> you know, um, how does it help? How does the diet, you know, actually having the language to know what muscles we're using and why, what, mm -hmm. what impact is it having? You know, so this provides both a tool for explaining and experiencing that. Mm -hmm. It also is, it's just sort of provides this platform for education, right? So as a vocalist myself, I use this for my own growth and my own progress, but I also use it as a tool to educate in my studio. Mm -hmm. So it kind of has that dual purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to say right off the bat, having used this, um, you know, a lot of the breath training that we do with singers, like we can do the inhale and then exhale. I will tell you, um, cause before I actually used this, I thought to myself, well, you know, does this one really need this? Let me tell you. And, and actually Angie and I, we met when I was in Florida a few months ago. Um, and we, we met with the breather and discussed this a little bit. And immediately I turned it on the top settings because I assumed at that at that moment in time that, well, obviously I'm at the highest setting. <laughs> well, let me tell you, this little machine is so powerful. When I finally learned to use it right, I'm on like the lowest setting right now. I mean, maybe not the lowest, but I'm on a pretty low setting. I think I'm on two and three. Mm -hmm. And I am getting a drastic workout. Now, what that tells me is that there is so much more room for growth in terms of my muscles that, I mean, you know, are already strong because you can't do what we do and, and not have strong muscles. Mm -hmm. But so what this tells me is, is that there really is a lot more room for our growth. And you think about these deep sea divers and like all of these crazy breathing techniques and all the control you have to have. And so anyways, that, that's what first struck me about the breather. Can you describe a little bit um, like, you know, not too technical so that none of us understand, but the mechanism that like th how this works really? Yeah. So there is medical grade silicone inside that creates the wind resistance. Mm -hmm. And so when you inhale, <laughs> Can you hear when it kind of like clicks into place? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do yeah. that again. If I breathe too softly, mm -hmm. you don't hear that. But if I breathe with more force, you feel like a little pop on the inhale. And that's the mechanism popping into place. It's supposed to make that sound. And that what is what creates that wind resistance. So you have these two dial settings here and one's for inhale, one's for exhale. So on the inhale, you'll hear that little pop and you'll feel that wind resistance that you've, you've got to sort of force against. Mm -hmm. And then on the exhale, you don't hear anything other than the, the wind blowing through. You'll actually, so that 
the air goes in through the inhale side and you feel the air coming out on this side. And again, you have that wind resistance so that you're having to employ your muscles to push against that. So the lowest setting, if you were at one and one, is going to be the lowest amount of resistance. The higher the setting, the higher the resistance. So like you said, you know, as you first get this, you're kind of exploring what what's going to work for me and what are my goals and and two, exactly what you were talking about earlier, when I was first introduced to this, I had the exact same thought process, which is, well, do we need this external device? We've been singing for eons and never used it before. And, you know, I would always practice with the, yes. you know, and trying to exhale that slow, controlled breath. And what it took me a little time to understand is that this is not meant to replicate singing, right? That's a key. That's a key. In, yeah. In the same way that a swimmer may lift weights, not because mm -hmm. lifting weights is something you do while swimming, right? But because it is a strengthening exercise that helps you to be a better swimmer. Yes. So this is similar to that, and so the goal is that you use a forceful inhalation. Mm -hmm. and a forceful exhalation in a short amount of time. That's key. That's this That's, is key. Right. To be able to fill your lungs completely and empty them completely within about two and a half seconds. So as singers, again, at first I was like, when I, I went to do it because we have an app that walks you through the process and it says inhale, exhale. And then there's like a little circle and it guides you through that. Well, mm -hmm. the first time I did it, I exhaled and I thought, this, there's no way. I can't empty my lungs completely in two and a half seconds because we're so trained to have that long, slow, controlled exhale. We want that. We want the ability to do that. And part of getting there is by doing this exercise that's short and quick and controlled. Yeah. Yeah, that that was really shocking to me because when we were at breakfast and I was trying this out for the first time, I thought I'm going to use this like I breathe for singing. So I did a slow inhale and then I did a slow exhale. And I mean, you told me that that wasn't the way it was supposed to be done, but I didn't I wasn't planning to like start my test run with this yet. So I just kind of was playing around. Yeah. And when I finally downloaded the app and was given instructions, that's when I had to lower my settings. Because I was like, I cannot do, I cannot inhale to maximum with the maximum amount of resistance. Like there's no way I was, I was squeezing muscles. Like I couldn't do that. Yeah. So I had to really like dial it back. And it is a workout. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it now for a few days. I, I was sick this past week. So I had to lay off. But I've been doing it now a few days post rehab and I actually feel like it's helping, mm -hmm. uh, which is something else we should talk about right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. The effects of, especially, you know, COVID is happening. Lots of people have had COVID. Lots of people um, maybe will get COVID. How can this help with that, especially being a singer and understanding that? Absolutely. So we do have singers who have used breather voice, mm -hmm. both before getting sick and after, including with COVID. So the first thing I'll say is, this is not something to use while you're sick, right? Mm -hmm. While you're sick or immediately after you've been sick, you really wanna let your body heal. There's, yeah. in the same way that if you have the flu, you're not gonna go to the gym and work out, right? Your body needs rest, hydration, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So what can happen is that especially post COVID where people have breathing complications as a result, this can be a really great tool for helping recover strength in the respiratory muscles. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've already seen that this can be really helpful. We actually just last week launched a study with the Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. So in conjunction with them, we, are inviting anyone who's been diagnosed with COVID within the last three months can sign up to participate in the study. It's all virtual. Mm -hmm. It's all online. You don't have to go in anywhere and get tested or anything like that. Um, the qualifications are you have to have been diagnosed within the last three months. 
you have to be 18 or older. Mm -hmm. um, I'm writing this in the chat for everybody. Great. And there was one more thing that I can't think of off the top of my head. But if you go to the website, our mm -hmm. landing page will take you directly there. Mm -hmm. And you get a free breather mm -hmm. to go along with uh, for being a participant in the study. Okay. okay. Uh, can participate in the study with Mayo Clinic. Okay, here we go. All right, there we go. I put all the info in the chat for that study. And awesome. I also, somebody asked, where can we buy it? So I posted that link there. It's the PN Medical. Um, and there are different breathers. So, I, you know, we do have a an audience that is going to be spanning because we have our YouTube audience and our Facebook audience. So we may have some people that are not necessarily singers watching. Mm -hmm. um, so there are different choices of different breathers. So if you go to the main PN medical, you'll be able to see which one might fit you best. Um, but yeah, the one absolutely. that we're talking about, because, you know, this is voice with Julia, we are talking about the breather voice <laughs> specifically right. in regards to singers, but this is really an important, I think, especially now with, with COVID and we both have a mutual friend who really benefited from use of the breather um, after long COVID. So yeah. this, this is something important to look into for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, so there's the original breather, they come in blue and pink. So it's that same white with the blue and pink. And then we have this one, breather voice and then breather fit, which is black. And um, their breather voice and breather fit are essentially the same mechanism. Um, but like I said before, they are a higher resistance. Mm -hmm. If you have, um, if you're an instructor, then you want to use this with students. Mm -hmm. um, it may not be a bad idea if you have got a beginning singer to start them with a regular breather. Yes, but that's a good point. Like you said, this, you know, we're, we are going to have as professional vocalists, we're starting out with not only more strength, but also more of an awareness about how to use our bodies effectively in this way. Mm -hmm. So um, did that answer your question? Yeah, and, and I wanna just pop in here. There's a comment that I just wanna show really fast. Okay, this says, I'm using a straw right now, but this looks good. Okay, well, let's, can we talk about how this is nothing like a straw? <laughs> Let's, yeah. <laughs> like, no, I mean, that's, I think that the straw, like, especially, you know, there's a lax box, the, the straw with the bubbling in the water. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about how this is different from that? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's similar in the clinical setting where there's a lot of different breathing devices that help for different things. Mm -hmm. And so there's a place for the straw and there's a place for, especially like something like you just described that has some, a kind of like visual that you can see the impact of your breath. Yeah. Um, those things are really useful. This is just different. Okay. So yeah. this provides a workload, mm -hmm. whereas the straw doesn't. So the straw can be useful for helping you focus on your breath, focus on that slow controlled breath, um, developing a sort of tolerance for that slow exhalation, right? Because it's easy if you've never done it before to get lightheaded and to feel short of breath and that kind of thing. So those are all useful tools. This is different because of the wind resistance. Now, mm -hmm. there are other medical devices that can provide similar resistance or similar workload, but none of them are quite the same. So this provides that workload a continuous for the entire breath cycle mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the whole inhalation the all the whole exhalation right mm -hmm. there are other devices that will the threshold devices where it once you pass a certain threshold the, the effort is to get up to this particular level of air pressure and once you do then it drops off and so you've reached the threshold good job but then it's over again which is fine. It's very useful for that, but it's not providing that exercise that we're talking about here that helps you strengthen and develop. Um, you know, being able to, I think it's helpful to talk about sort of the specifics of why this matters mm -hmm. for us as singers, because, you know, at, at this level, 
we understand the necessity of the stability of the breath and that kind of thing. But what does that actually mean when we can sing unconsciously, when we're not focusing on just making it through to the end of the line, right? Mm -hmm. What are we then able to do? So I'll give you an example. I have loved and have worked on Mahler's Kindertotenlieder for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I came across it in grad school and that was a long time ago. And for a long time, I was really challenged by, if you're familiar with this work at all, especially the, the very first song is the one that I focused on the most. Mm -hmm. There are all these really long, very slow, very controlled lines. Mm -hmm. And these are songs on the death of children. Mm -hmm. These are songs that are very emotional, very, it's a very specific story you're telling, mm -hmm. singing this song cycle. Being distracted about whether or not you're going to make it to the end of the line is not helpful. <laughs> not helpful. I agree. At all, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, before I started using the breather, I could not sing to the end of any of the phrase, maybe like one, mm -hmm. where I could reach the end without running out of breath. And so I was at a point where I was like, well, this is just not a song that I can sing. It's mm -hmm. just outside of my realm of abilities. Mm -hmm. And so when I came across this and I was kind of mm, like questioning, like you said, is this really necessary? I said, I know just the thing. I know how I'm going to test this out. And so I made a recording of myself singing the Mahler badly. And then I used this for two weeks, mm -hmm. morning and evening, two sets of 10 breaths in the morning with a one minute break in between, two sets of 10 in the evening, and then six days a week for two weeks. And in two weeks, I was successfully able to complete every single phrase in that piece, which is, I think, huge. Huge, that is huge. And that's not a lot of time. Yeah, it's not a lot of time. I thought it would definitely take longer. And it's so much more than just like, it'll improve your tone. Sure, that's also part of it. Or it'll help you increase your range. Like these are all, but this is like, you can breathe longer. That's the basis of what we're doing. That means that within that time, I can now think about my phrasing and my characterization and everything that makes that music special, everything that makes my voice special. I can now concentrate on the nuance that makes for compelling performance because I've got this part on lock. That's awesome. You know? That is, that is so important to know. Now, now that makes me curious. So this, this can also help improve range and tone. Yeah, because again, if you think about it, obviously there are issues with range, for example, that are specific, that don't necessarily have to do with the breath, have mm -hmm. to do with, you know, our oral posture and that kind of thing and placement. And But again, if you don't have that fundamental basis of strong breath control, then it's going to be a lot harder to get to those other places. Yeah. And can I piggyback on that for a second? Because... Yeah. You know, I'm noticing it, this is very like short, like we're talking about a very short sample size, but I just had a really bad cold flash flu. It wasn't COVID thankfully, but um, the past week and I was had laryngitis, couldn't sing at all. My lungs were filled with stuff. And so yesterday was the first day I could even think about singing. So what I did was I, I just, said to myself, okay, what do I need to do? So I took out this, I took out the app and I started doing this first. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no, let me go back. I started humming first mm -hmm. and I was feeling like things, like something was just off. So then I said, let's stop. Let's go back to this. Um, so I did this, uh, the two sets, and then I did it in the morning and at night. And yesterday my voice was still off, but today I started with this. And I sang in the morning and 
I mean, obviously I'm not 100%, but I pretty much attribute it to this. And I'll tell you why. Because I noticed one of the things that was really off, I mean, besides the fact that, you know, I did have laryngitis, but one of the things that was off was that it felt like my breath was just going <sighs> on to, on, especially on leaps or like on intervals. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, as, as a result of having this, this um, upper respiratory issue. And so when I did this, I felt in that moment, it was training me not just like obviously long term this is going to be much more useful but mm -hmm. even in that moment kinesthetically in my body to understand okay this is what i need to do and like come on let's get up it's like you know wake up let's let's get to action and so it really did that so i can only imagine what it does like you know we're, we're talking let's say we want to do a pianissimo high c or something and we need to just be so controlled with our breath, like so controlled. Well, you might be able to do it on a good day, right? But this is a little bit more reliable <laughs> when you're constantly training those muscles. Okay, let's see. Okay, we have um, Gabriel's tuning in from YouTube. He says, where can I purchase this? I bet it'll help with my Oh, do mine hold Oh, yes. Yes, it will help with that for certain um, I am going to put the, the link again in the chat for you, Gabriel. And just for anybody that's tuning in either now or on the replay, let's just stop and say um, that there is a study. So if anybody has had COVID within the past three months, um, there's a study being done with PN Medical and Mayo Clinic. And you can register for that study. I'm going to put that link again here. Um, you have to be over 18 and have had COVID in the past three months to qualify. But if you sign up here, you will actually get a free breather for participating in the study. So if there are singers out there that have had COVID within the past three months, I think it'd be very helpful for the research to and, go ahead and do that. And certainly if you, if anybody knows if you've got somebody in your life who's had it, who may not necessarily be a singer, but could benefit from yeah. using the regular breather device, um, that yeah. that would be great as well. And you know what? Let's take just a second because we might have people here. What what can the regular breather do for normal people? Nor so, <laughs> normal people that are not singers. You know what I mean. <laughs> it's true. As well, as singers as, are not normal. Well, singers well, are. I mean, are we? Normal? Are we though? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. That's okay. I love that about us. Do you remember our songs that we used to write? I still have the, the um, diary. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Is this the appropriate place to say that we were in a group together in seventh grade? Silver Rain. Silver Rain. <laughs> <laughs> we were so talented. Our audition was we had to sing a Fiona Apple song in front of each other. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And we were so serious and we had a lot of feelings. 12 year old girls, I tell you what. So, <laughs> um, so Gabriel, to answer your question, if you go to the PN Medical website that Julia just put up there, you'll see that you can choose from the different products. So the the breather, the original breather that's in blue or pink, it was developed for a clinical setting. So people who have some kind of illness or some kind of respiratory muscle weakness that they need to improve for their quality of life, for their health. So you'll see a link for that. Then there's for the breather voice and then breather fit. Um, so the breather voice is what you want to click on. And when you go through that, there's, there's going to be a place for a coupon code and you put in Angie special and that gives you 25% off your oh, yeah. purchase. But in there so that, okay, I'm going to put that in the chat. Um, While you do that, the, the other thing that I, something that I really love about our company is that if you are an individual, I mean, we've got people buying these all of the time. If you have a question, you can email me directly you can call me. You can email the care at pnmedical.com. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the, the help email address. 
it gets read immediately. It goes to everybody has access to help people. And I am available. Part of my job is to help walk anybody through questions that they have. Mm -hmm. And so if an individual in Germany decides that they want to purchase one, just set up a Zoom call and I'll walk them through it and help with any questions that they may have. Um, and it's that's very education is a huge part of the mission of our company. It's not just about like, oh, I just want to sell these things and, and make a buck. Like yep. it's educating people so that they can have the tools that they need to live a better life. And I can I can honestly say that it's, it's something that I've really admired about my colleagues and about the mission of the company. Um, and because I really value that. So it's really nice to get to do work where I get to do that for others. And what's, what's amazing to me is how many free trainings and free offerings that the company offers for, for work with the breather. It's just, it's really awesome. Yeah, we try to provide as many resources as possible. And we're developing new resources all the time. If somebody says, hey, you know what I could really use in my clinic is, you know, that's how all of the stuff that we've developed has come about is because people express needs to us. So if there are, I, I get feedback from musicians using this. I, I had a, a trumpeter recently gave me some fantastic feedback that I was like, hmm, I'm going to take this to them because I want to take a look at some new things we can add to the app. Um, and that's very useful. But um, what are you saying right before that? Oh, I'm not. Oh, the, about how much um, free education that there is like. Yes. Oh, so for the yes, exactly. The webinar. So we do a free training every month for new breather users. So those are generally geared towards the original breather. So people who have health issues, but it's very useful. I have watched these multiple times and I learn something new every time. Even if you're not a clinician in a medical setting, you will learn so much from this. It's very helpful. It's totally free. You could just sign up on the website. You join the Zoom call. Um, your your camera's not on. Your sound's on. You can be doing the cooking your lunch or whatever while you're listening. And then there's um, a Q and A afterwards, so people can ask questions of our master clinician, um, and she will take her time and answer whatever specific questions people may have. Um, but we're also always doing webinars and. Um, we're going to be developing more conversations specific to the voice community as well, so that we can have, we can offer resources like that too. That's fantastic. Now, one thing I do want to bring up, and this is because I had this objection in my head when I first started using this. And so I want to break down any barrier to somebody also using this, you know, we're taught inhaling through the nose, right? And exhaling slowly, like we want to inhale, we don't want to do this kind of frantic. So this feels like kind of the antithesis of what we should be doing. But can you just reiterate that this is like, you know, lifting weights, this is not training you for how you should be breathing in regular life? Like, can you just kind of elaborate on that? Absolutely. I mean, if you think about, if you think back to your lessons, I don't know about you, but I did a lot of weird stuff in lessons, you know, laying on the floor, bending over. I think the most beautiful high note I ever sang, I was on my knees with my forehead pressed to the floor and somebody had her elbow in my back. And it was honestly glorious. It was, a, I mean, I'm a mezzo, so it was a high B and I was, and it was just like effortless. Mm -hmm. Obviously we don't do that in performances, right? Unless, you know? unless we're at some theater in Germany, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> right. But you know, these kind of like strange things we do when we go to sing, we don't breathe mm -hmm. like that. Right. Like yeah. we develop all of these little training methods to practice specific skills, mm -hmm. to isolate. Because when we sing, we're having to think about 
a bazillion different things at once. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about our posture and our breath and our tone and our positioning and our placement. And we're thinking about our expression and our, we're supposed to be relating it to our own personal lives. And then, and then there's, there's the language and the, you know, all of these things and then forget the costumes and the wigs and the, right. Yeah. So it's impossible to practice all of those things at the same time. Mm -hmm. We have to break it down into little isolated things. And then as those become normalized, as it gets into our muscle memory, then we don't, it doesn't have to be so front of mind the entire time. We've sort of acclimated to the process. It's part of how we do things now. So you and I no longer need to lay on the floor in order to feel how to breathe properly. It wouldn't hurt to have a little refre refresher every once in a while, but it's not the same as it was when we first began. This is like that. This is just one more tool that is not going to replicate what it is to perform. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. It's to help you hone this particular part of your singing. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, it is the fundamental part of singing. Yeah. Breath, strength, control, and coordination. And this is so awesome. Now, I just want to ask if anybody's watching, if you have any questions whatsoever, pop them in the chat. Um, and if you want us to see who you are, just make sure you give StreamYard permission to uh, post your name and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, can can we talk about this a little bit? Like, okay, so you were talking, we, we covered this a little bit about the beginning student, how we might want to start them on the regular breather, like somebody completely brand new to singing. But let's say we've got, you know, um, like a young artist coming into our studio. At, how do we assess which breather might be right? How do we assess the settings? What, what kind of, you know, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, that's a really good question. So if you have someone who, like a young artist, like you said, mm -hmm. I think starting them with the breather voice is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It's not like it could injure yourself if you do it wrong, right? It's just going to not be effective. Mm -hmm. So the way that I did it for myself, what I found useful was I figure, like you did, okay, coming at this as a professional singer and I'm teaching all the time, so I'm constantly exercising these skills. Uh, let me start on three and three, just to see. I mean, I played with it a few times to try different things, but I set it to three and three, and I just stuck with that for a week because you're not going to see results that same day. You've got to do it for a little while, but even a week is a short amount of time. So I did it for a week. And after that, I realized, okay, this has actually become too easy. Mm -hmm. So we have an effort scale mm -hmm. that you can actually print out. It's mm -hmm. available on the website. And we also have the ability to do that on the app. And so if you, every time you use the app and you do your exercise, it'll ask you, what was your level of effort today? Mm -hmm. And that'll change. Like if you've been sick, or if you've increased the resistance, it, it depends. But then you it tracks over time and you'll see. So I saw how after a week, my effort went down. And that's mm. how I knew, okay, now it's time for me to increase the resistance. So I went up to four and four just to see. And you don't necessarily have to adjust it mm -hmm. parallel to each other. That's why they're independent. So you can adjust just your inspiration or just the expiration and it's yeah. still going to be, you know, it's different for everybody. So I did it at four and four for a week. And when I first started, I was like, Ooh, that is different. That's, that's that is next level <laughs> by the end of the week. Yeah. But by the end of the week, I was like, Oh, this is still work, still effort. I would kind of finish with a light sweat. Yes. You know, I didn't feel lightheaded or dizzy mm -hmm. or, Certainly nothing was uncomfortable, but I, it was work. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got sick. I had a cold. And so I didn't, I was, I had a cough, like a lingering cough for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So it was almost like, it wasn't quite going back to the beginning, but I did bump it back down to three and three. Okay. Um, and so 
it's going to depend on the person. It's going to depend on their skill level, their health, um, mm -hmm. how often they're training. Also, you know, I think with classical musicians, we're just, we have an understanding and an expectation of like a, a strict practice. Mm -hmm. We know what it is to be very intentional about that. So if you've got a student who's doing this twice a day, every day, six days a week, yeah. they're going to have a different output than yeah. someone who's doing it more casually. Yes, that's so true. The, the consistency now that that makes me wonder, like, because, you know, you got sick and I'm sick. Do, does our lung, uh, does our diaphragmatic ability or lung ability really decrease that quickly over a so, period of a few days? So it can. I mean, I, I don't it's not going to change with any real significance over just a couple of days. Mm -hmm. But certainly if you've had a bad flu or bad bronchitis, um, it's like anything else. If you don't use your muscles to their fu full capability for an extended period of time, you're going to have some weakness. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I years ago injured my left leg and for a long time didn't realize that I was favoring that leg because I was trying to avoid pain. Well, by the time that I went to see the doctor, my left calf was smaller than my right. And I didn't even know. And it wasn't until I actually looked and they measured it. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, the, our muscles can atrophy. Yes. And so, you know, it may not be a very obvious one, but in the case of COVID, it can be absolutely very obvious, right? Yes. And especially if you've been laid up in bed for a long time, mm -hmm. you're going to have mm -hmm. that muscle weakness. Um, and you're going to notice it more as a singer because yeah. you're just, you're more in tune with that yeah. part of your body anyway. Right. And, and after we've been sick, we, we tend to breathe more shallow, shallow, uh, shallow. Uh, what am I saying? Shallow. Shallowly. 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 Is that yes. a word? I, don't I think it that. is. Okay. It's a word. Um, but we tend to breathe more shallowly. So it is a little bit like we're protecting, like you're talking about favoring that leg, we're sort of protecting our lungs after we've been sick. So we're not mm -hmm. really giving that full expansion. Well, yeah. And if you think about like, if you've had a cough that's really irritating and, and sometimes even exhausting yes. and it can make you hoarse as well. And we try to avoid that. So you may avoid coughing. You may try to repress the cough because you are just trying to not experience the unpleasantness of that. And so, like you said, you may breathe more shallowly. You may do little compensating things that you don't even realize you're doing to mm -hmm. kind of decrease your discomfort, but actually, you know, may be necessary to kind of help you get past that hurdle and get back to good health. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You know, this, th I will tell you anybody that's just tuning in now, I keep saying this, but you know, we might have different viewers at different times. I just want to say that this really, it seems simple. And when you experience it, it is just a completely different feeling. So what I'd like to do now, Angie, if it's all right with you, is you and I do like one round, like one set together so that mm -hmm. people can see what this, I have my breather app about ready yeah. to go. So we can, <laughs> sure. and, and actually this will tell us. Um, so we'll do like one, one rep. And then we can, uh, you know, do it together. Okay. It, yeah. So it calls it out, right? So it's going to, yeah, it's going to call it out. And then <clears throat> what I would just say, like, so if you were a new user that you've never done this before, I would mm -hmm. say, obviously check your posture mm -hmm. and then make sure that when you exhale, that you don't puff your cheeks. Yeah. Right. That the yeah. effort shouldn't come don't from here. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I'm ready when you are. Okay. Let's get our, okay, let's see, skip video. All right, now I have us on and we're going to start five. Whoops, four, three, two, one. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. Whew. Now I noticed I, I'm feeling pretty lightheaded to be honest. Um I, I, but you know, now what is something I'm noticing on myself as I'm watching you? Mm -hmm. You look very relaxed when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, I have this on three and three, but mm -hmm. I could see my neck muscles were really engaging. So do mm -hmm. I have it on too high of a setting? So should I bring it down? So not necessarily because I've seen other people use it. And also like, so if your, your neck is more slender than mine, you're going to see like the sort of tendons and ligaments more obviously. So what I would think about is, you know, do you feel any tension in your neck or your shoulders? Um, so just making sure that you can kind of wiggle and mm -hmm. have that so that theoretically you could. Yeah. Hmm. The same way I would practice that singing, making sure I'm not locking up. Yeah. Okay. So, so that makes sense. The, now here's the really interesting thing on that exhale. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not quite able to get all of the air out mm -hmm. in so two seconds. I think of it like the, the image I kind of have in my mind is of like a squeeze again. It's almost like um, if my intercostal muscles were hands and my lungs were a sponge full of water, right? <laughs> so like, that's the image I have is like, you just breathe, you bring in the muscles and you put that really controlled pressure mm -hmm. to squeeze everything out, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing that I was thinking about while I was doing it just now is how I like how on the exhalation, I can really feel the difference between my upper and lower abdominal muscles engaging. Oh. Totally. Yeah. And those lower abs are not always easy to, mm -hmm. to really be aware of. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so I really like the effort that it requires mm -hmm. to really contract all of that. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I actually like doing it standing because mm -hmm. when I'm standing, I feel like I can really kind of feel all of my muscles better and more connected to them. And I can even feel like the upper abdominals, the lower abdominals, the pelvic girdle, yeah. all of that, all of the, those muscles that are just, they're more subtle. We don't pay attention to them as much, but are all really crucial, especially for this kind of high level singing yeah. that, where you have to have everything in place. Yes. You know? Yeah. No, that's true. And, and I can even feel like I can sensate my diaphragm movement. Like I can feel the contraction on that inhale. Mm -hmm. It's so strong. I mean, I, I'm still wondering if I have it on too high of a setting after my sickness, but you might. And so, you know, there's no downside in just lowering it yeah. for a few days Yes, and just track your effort level with the effort mm -hmm. scale and you'll, you'll be able to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's, what's really awesome to me because, you know, like I, like I said, when I first got this, I thought, Oh, I'll be on the highest settings, please. This is not going to do much. Mm -hmm. And I realized I'm nowhere near that. Like I actually have a lot of room to grow on this. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I can't wait once, you know, I do my proper test. We were talking about the, that corn gold piece that mm -hmm. is, just so killer at the end it's like sitting up and po like above the passaggio for days and climaxing mm -hmm. over a huge orchestra um and this requires a lot of support and i cannot wait to use that piece as sort of the test like before and after with this yes I, 
So yes, I really want to hear the before and after because I I know that, that you're going to have a difference. Yeah, so I'll be oh, yeah. very curious to hear. Well, and and this is this is what's so amazing to me is like because because we haven't started this formal uh, trial yet. I'm amazed by just in the day, like starting my practice with this how different that feels almost to the point that I don't want to sing until I've done this, you know? Well, yeah. It's like once you've felt an easier way, it's like the first time you realize you don't have to sing with your tongue down your throat, you know, and you experience that and you're just like, Oh my God, I never want to go back. And at first you do go back because of habit, yes. but the more you practice that healthy habit, you're just like, no, this is, this is so much better this way. It's yeah. so much easier, so much more free. Totally. So yeah, I d definitely recommend using it right before rehearsing. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely kind of just helps get you into that space, yeah. both physically and psychologically. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing I was going to say too, is that <clears throat> I found that the more I've done this morning and evening, during the day, I'm also breathing better, even if I'm not singing. I'm yeah. more aware of my breath now as a general rule because of that. So mm -hmm. I'll notice, usually it's when I'm driving, and I'm like almost holding my breath because I'm tense. And I have to remind myself, breathe. Mm -hmm. And when I do breathe and take that really nice big breath, I can feel that it is bigger. It is a bigger yeah. expansion. It's a fuller breath. And I'm more intentional about it because I've been doing this practice. So if you deal with anxiety, if you deal with any kind of just like the pressures of the day, it really helps to develop that healthier breathing pattern. Yeah, because the muscles get used, like you said, so you don't have to think about it as much. Your muscles are used to going in that expansion mm -hmm. and filling out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that there's like a slight psychological component to this too. This I think cool. that there's, there's actually a big one. And, you know, this makes me think of the other day, um, my son and I were working on math homework. Oh, not my favorite. It wasn't my not favorite. My favorite. No, it wasn't my favorite then. It's not my favorite. We won't now. shout out, you know, who no. not, not here on the public forum. <laughs> we would never, we would never, but um, suffice to say that it was frustrating mm -hmm. trying to teach him. And I got really stressed because I'm just really want to help him and I'm not finding the right words. And, and I, <laughs> I got really stressed and my son was next to me and I just hear him go. <sighs> <laughs> I didn't even look at him because I was probably holding my breath. <laughs> and, and then I hear him again. And so, of course, grudgingly, I'm like, yes. And then I turn to him and I'm like, good job, buddy. Thank you. And he's and he looks at me. He's nine. And he says, this is why we practice breathing when we're not upset. So that when we are upset, we know what to do. <laughs> and I was like, yes. you're like, I hate it that you're right. <laughs> but I can't argue with that. No. I can't. And also, I'm glad you were listening. You know? <laughs> but this is why we practice these things. Right. 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 We practice when we're not on the under the pressure of the spotlight mm -hmm. of being on stage. When it's easy, yeah. when it's just us, when it's low stakes. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Does anybody have any final questions before we sign off? Um, I will post again, all of this info so that we have that if you, people who want to purchase the breather um, and Angie has a very special discount code for 25% off. Um, I'm going to put that right now again here. So you can go to pnmedical.com. I'll put it in the chat so you'll see it. And um, whoops, Wait, I preemptively posted that. Okay, and discount code is Angie Special. Mm -hmm. 
because Angie is special. Mm -hmm. For 25% off. Okay. Um, and again, for those who have had COVID within the past three months and uh, want to participate in a study with PN Medical and Mayo Clinic, you can sign up here and you have to be over 18. I have, I'd be curious if anyone under 18 is watching this. That, that's kind of cool. Um, but you have to be over 18 and uh, you have to have had COVID within the last three months. And if you want to participate, you sign up here and you also get a free breather if you participate in the study. So there you go. And the study is all virtual. You don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. It's all just virtual. the comfort and not of your just for singers. You can be anybody who's had COVID. So if you have family members too that you think might benefit from this device, you can have them sign up here. Absolutely. Awesome. Andy, thank you so much. I'm going to end our broadcast. We'll stay on here. So we'll, you and I will say goodbye privately, but we'll wave goodbye to, to the interwebs. Bye, everybody. Bye.